bring out the prisoner, William Gluck. Yes, Colonel. Come out. Thought you were in a hurry to get me in. Look, General Laren is inclined to offer your clemency in return for uh, information. What clemency can anyone expect from Gurko Lannan? If you value your life, give us the names of your accomplices. I don't value it that highly. So you're the young man who made the mistake of shooting at me this morning. My mistake was in missing you. You are worse than an assassin. You're a fool. That's what your countrymen think of you, Colonel Zimmerman, for saving Gurko Lannan's life three years ago when Lichtenberg might have been saved by another fool like me. I missed you this morning because I was too far away. But now... Stop! Let him go. That was the second mistake you made, Luke. Men like you never realize that I rule you collectively because I can master you individually. They tell me that you're a blacksmith. And proud of it. Good. Well, I'm the son of a stonemason, and also proud of it. Zimmerman, you're not to interfere under any circumstances. Yes, sir. Now you can hang him. Guard, fall in. that Her Royal Highness's carriage is ready to start? Yes, Baron Bonovo. We're ready. You have everything? Money, passports? Everything. Remember, you'll not be out of danger for a moment. Oh, yes, yes, I know, but please don't worry about me. General Lannan will never suspect. For years I've gone for a drive every afternoon at five o'clock. Yes, but today you're driving to Paris. If anything happened to you, I should never forgive myself. My dear. We both know that our last hope is for you or for me to make a personal appeal to the French. For weeks, General Lannan's watched your every move. Therefore, I'm the one to go. I thought we'd settled all that. This will inform Louis Napoleon of true conditions in Lichtenberg and what we offer for his intervention. It will be fatal if it falls into the wrong hand. I'll see that that doesn't happen. Her Royal Highness's carriage is waiting. Very good start. If you look at Louis Napoleon like that, you'll come back with an army corps. She's pretending to go for her afternoon drive, but she intends to go further, across the frontier, then to Paris. Her Royal Highness has just left the palace. You may go, Staff. Well done. Thank you, Excellency. But you'll stop. It's difficult to believe that the Prime Minister would accuse himself of treason in writing. But you've got him now, Excellency. You must have patience, Zimmerman. Patience is a wonderful thing. Yes, Excellency. When you're after mice, you can treat them as mice. But von Neuhoff is a lion, and you can't catch a lion in a mouse trap. But treason, that will bring down even a lion. Yes, Excellency. See what this start. Lovely afternoon for a drive, my dear Baron. Your parting with Her Royal Highness must have been very touching. 
I'm wondering how you could bring yourself to permit a beautiful and inexperienced young girl to set out for a foreign land carrying a very dangerous letter in your own handwriting. You see, my spy system works very well. Just what do you mean, Lennon? I mean that when a prime minister conspires to set the troops of another nation against his own people, it is called treason and is punishable by death. I've just given orders to have her Royal Highness brought back. And with her, the proof of your treason. You wouldn't dare to lay hands on Zona of Lichtenberg. You mean that I wouldn't dare to permit Her Royal Highness to leave Lichtenberg? Aside from my personal feeling, Zona of Lichtenberg is the symbol of an authority that has existed in this country for 20 generations. And I desire to employ that symbol extensively in my dealings with the people. Up to now, your influence has prevented a closer understanding between Her Royal Highness and myself. It is a pity that such a brilliant career as yours must come to an end, my dear Baron. Zimmermann. Excellency. Baron von Neuhoff is to be confined in the palace dungeon until the day of his trial. Guards! I've taken since we left the palace. I can still feel every soldier in the city staring at the back of my neck. Awfully like breathing when we cross the frontier at Petch. Poor Baron von Neuhof. I wonder what will happen when General Lannan discovers we've gone. Let's think of what would have happened if we hadn't gone. It's getting chilly. We'll be followed by home, the palace guard. Sorry if my dog's frightened you. You, you ruffian, my poor lamb. I do assure you, mademoiselle, it was an accident. You call setting his dogs on was an accident. Isn't there something I can do? Can you get us to Patch quickly at once? Well, not in your carriage, I'm afraid. Well, forget the carriage, just get us to Patch. In that case, it's as easy as... As what? As this. Mademoiselle seems to be in a great hurry. I am. Fitz, you know a shortcut through the woods? Yes, sir, this way. Hang on. What happened to her royal highness? Where is she? Well, I don't know. They were here when we went after the horses. Arrest these men. Lieutenant Zoll, take half the men and search the left side of the road. The rest of you follow me. They can't get far on foot. I've forgotten to ask who you are. Yes, silly, isn't it? And you don't know the ruffian who wrecked your carriage. I'm the Count of Monte Cristo. Mr. Fathendop, may I present the Count of Monte Cristo? I beg your pardon? Uh, uh, 
bath and dock. Zona fast and dock. Oh, uh, fast and dock. Very unusual, isn't it? Can't we go a little faster? Surely. Hold on. Tied up. <laughs> After great effort, I, Hercules Schneider, have found you the only carriage in Petch. Of course, the horses may not be the best in the world. Can they walk? Oh, yes, madame. That's all that's necessary. Point them towards Paris and start the moving. Tonight, madame? Certainly tonight. But it's dark. You don't say. It usually is at night. Paris is the other way. You're looking back towards Lichtenberg. Yes, I know. I used to think it the most beautiful country in the world. Are you staying long in Petch? <laughs> no, I'm on my way to Lichtenberg on business. But about five o'clock this afternoon, it became a real pleasure trip. I'm sure you weren't able to find a carriage. You were right. No carriage. But we must find one. No carriage. That's ah, too bad. But after all, you do have one because I sent for mine. You haven't told me the object of your journey, but I know it must be urgent. Therefore, it's only right that I replace your carriage with mine to save you further delay. Besides, the road isn't safe for a young girl traveling alone. Anything can happen. You're quite right. You're sure you don't mind a very early start? Hmm? Oh, not at all. The horses and I will be waiting with the dawn. Dawn? Haven't you had enough driving and excitement for one day? You will forgive us, won't you? Hmm? Uh -huh. Good night. Yes. Oh, <laughs> well, uh, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Miss Taffendorp. What are you doing? We're getting out of here. I've got a carriage and it's waiting downstairs. You mean you... I lied to him. Of course I lied to him. It was the only way to get rid of him. That young man makes a career of helping people who are in trouble get into more trouble. But he's so nice. I, I feel guilty deceiving him. Zona. Zona Fathendor. Oh, that can be changed. And it's a long way to Paris. Soldiers! Listen, bird soldiers! Neither somebody leaves this room. Look here, fellow. There's a carriage waiting outside. For whom? This is not Lichtenberg. I don't know how you cross the frontier, but you've no right to ask me questions. For whom is the carriage waiting? Two ladies. Guests. Ladies of quality. Their carriage met with an accident and, and they... where could... are these two ladies of quality? In the parlor, at the top of the stairs. How dare you force your way into this room? My orders are to escort you back to Lichtenberg, Your Highness. I am also instructed to secure a certain letter you are carrying to the Emperor of the French. Must I remind you that I'm the Grand Duchess of Lichtenberg and command my own person? I am under orders, Your Highness. A letter, if you please. I think Her Royal Highness said she commanded her own person. Who are you? My friend here will introduce me. Please don't. <laughs> My father was the best salesman in France. Schneider, I've been 20 years younger, 
The whole Lichtenberg army couldn't have taken her away from here. What kind of a country is it when common soldiers lay hands on their own queen? From the tales I hear, the days are as black as nights in Lichtenberg. Your poor little grand duchess. A crown is a pretty heavy load for so young a head. And so beautiful. The saints be praised. You are too brave a gentleman for those bandits to finish you. Are you sure you feel right, sir? Oh, oh there, there, poor gentleman. Fafen. Fafen. Fafen, Dalton. Run, get the doctor. He's out of his head. No, never mind the doctor. Get me my carriage. My business in Lichtenberg is more urgent than I thought. <laughs> Please. You've been pacing the floor for hours. I knew how guilty. Branded a traitor, a criminal. And his only crime was in being my father's friend and mine. He was more than my master. He was my friend. I would have given my life. I understand how you feel, Stott. You were one of the few people he trusted. Surely your royal highness has some plan to save him. We must save him. How can they print such lies about him? <laughs> because Gurkha Lennon wrote them. You may go, Stott, and Countess, if you don't mind. Ah, my roses. A thanks offering for your safe return. General Lennon, I command you to set Baron von Neuhoff free at once. Ordinarily, your wish would be my command. But von Neuhoff must die. I understand your grief. You are thinking of his services to you. But I must consider his danger to me. I consider that you're having him murdered. When the same thing happened to Caesar and Louis XVI, they didn't call it murder, they called it patriotism. If Baron von Neuhoff is guilty, then so am I. Arrest me. Arrest your Royal Highness. Unthinkable. Then I have nothing more to say to you. But there is something that I have wanted to say to you of the greatest importance for three years. If there is a difference between myself and other men, it is because I have dared to carry out my dreams. I dreamed of becoming master of Lichtenberg. Well, I am master. But I have other dreams, more personal. Some men are born under a star. My great dream has been to share my star with you. What are you suggesting, General Lannan? You should be able to recognize an honest proposal of marriage. Marriage? With you? A liar, a murderer? Say it, madame. A peasant. My peasant blood springs from the soil, and it runs rich and strong. History proves that blue blood has always benefited when mingled with red. Better than any man, I appreciate all you represent. Zona, you're a queen but you're also a woman. Together we could build a greater Lichtenberg, could pass its glory onto our children. Are you trying to say you love me, General Lennon? I've been trying to say it for months. Even when you look through me rather than at me, I've often wondered when you look at me what you see. I see a man I'd give my life to destroy. Get out. I quite understand. The aristocrat is talking to the peasant. Good morning, Your Highness. This paper has been printed for months. Now some of you people here know who printed it. My orders are to strip every house in this town until we uncover that press. I know who did it. Who? I'll take you there. Go ahead. Go ahead. There it is. There it is in here. Smashing those 
those windows. Clean out this place. I don't know. Where is it? In the basement, I heard it. Arrest him. Swartz! Spider! Come with me. Steady, Hans. All right, outside. So you're Kurt Merbeck, the man who prints the torch. Using your store as a blind to hide this press. It took me three months to hunt you down. You know the penalty for printing a newspaper without government sanction? Yes. But the charges against von Newhoff are lies. And there are some things not even the rope can strangle. Take it away. Clean out this big side. This is not law and order. General Lannan gives the command to lick the nerve. But this is tyranny! Hey! 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 You come with me. This way. Not here. This is our own store. I know it is. Where's your cellar? Over here. Look what they've done. I'll pay them back for this. Why did you think of coming here? This is the one place they never think of looking for you. Thank you for getting me away. But you shouldn't have helped me. They'll hunt you down, kill you on sight. How about you? Oh, I'm used to being hunted. They've been trying to catch us for months. Well, ducking in here was simple. I wish I knew how we were going to duck out. There is a way out. Hmm? Here. This is the way we sent the papers out. Why didn't you escape this way? Oh, we couldn't do that. These steps lead to some friends. We might have betrayed them. In the old days, this was a cemetery. Looks as if it still is. He saved my life. Gentlemen, the printing press is destroyed. My father is arrested. The same thing would have happened to me, only for this man. Pass. At least you escaped. I saw what you did, sir. That was enough to assure you're welcome here. I saw what you did. That was enough to explain you being here. I am Fritz Stoner, Lieutenant of the Household Guard. This is Lieutenant Schultz. Lieutenant, I'm Edmund Dantes, sometimes called the Count of Monte Cristo. Oh, Monte Cristo? Young Monte Cristo, the richest man in Europe. It's like meeting a legend, face to face. You're twice welcome. Thank you for what you did. Listen, everyone. Disaster has dealt us a second blow, a death blow. Gurko has given Zimmerman secret orders that Baron von Neuhoff is to die at midnight. When he dies, all that is good in Lichtenberg will die with him. Von Neuhoff? Yes. This is a picture of Baron von Neuhoff. Where are you going? Fluck missed him. I won't. Killing Gurko isn't the answer. 
I could have done that long ago. We must kill what Gurkle represents. Yes, you're right. That's right. You must have a high opinion of our country. Welcomed in a tomb with the news that our greatest man is to be assassinated and the knowledge that our Grand Duchess is a prisoner in her own palace. Prisoner? But surely you intend doing something about it. Easier said than done. Zona is helpless without the support and counsel of von Neuhoff. To save her, we must save von Neuhoff first. And von Neuhoff is in the palace dungeon, under a death watch. As if an old man could dig his way out with his bare hands. There is one chance. But it's so slim it's impossible. Well, we'll take any chance. None of you can help me. I'd have to have someone in the palace. Someone beyond Gurkle's suspicion. You men make me a little ashamed of myself. One hears of men like you, but never sees them. You're right. If one you has to be saved, it must be from inside the palace. Perhaps I can qualify as the volunteer you need. You? But how can you, a stranger, get in the palace? By using a bank draft for 25 million francs as a calling card. Money has opened stronger doors. I'm in Lichtenberg because General Lannan has applied to the House of Monte Cristo for a loan. A loan? Yes. Which I have just decided to grant. <laughs> Gentlemen, I consider it a privilege to help you prove that the torch of liberty is difficult to extinguish. You mean be one of us? Mentally, I've been one of you since my first hour in this country. <laughs> my dear General Lannan, so good of you to receive me. Beastly business, this banking. What? Do you know, you look like an entirely different person. <laughs> I hope the effect doesn't remain permanent. <laughs> you know, I'm glad I thought of buying these glasses on the way back to the hotel. They had that last perfect touch. I wish I didn't have to do this. I'd understand perfectly if you'd like to change your mind about going through with it. Oh, I'm not worried about that. I was thinking of a Royal Highness, Zona. After our meeting in Pet, she must have thought me a fool. And now when we meet again in the palace, I have to make her believe that I'm a bigger fool than she thought. Huh? I can't let her know the me I'd like her to know. And I can't let General Lanny know the me I'd like him to know. I... I'm getting a little confused. I'm beginning to wonder which me is me. <laughs> It'll take more than a few ruffles and a pair of eyeglasses to fool Gurko Lannan. You'd be better off with a sword in your hand. I'm afraid General Lannan would suspect a man who tried to get close to him with a sword in his hand. What makes you so sure he won't suspect a fop? A fop is a fool. And a fool enjoys a strange protection not shared by other men. No one takes a fool seriously. You'll need protection if Gurko discovers your real purpose is to help my new off escape. My dear Lieutenant Dorna. I'm sure I can convince General Lannan that the Count of Monte Cristo has absolutely no interest in a slimy old dungeon. <laughs> Order my carriage. I'm a trifle late for this appointment. Four days, to be exact. Excellency, your carriage is waiting. The Count of Monte Cristo to see your Excellency. Monte Cristo, eh? So he decided to come. Three days after I'd expected him. If I was some snivelling prince, these bankers would come fawning to give me anything I wanted. If I didn't need his money to build up my army, I'd give His Excellency the Count of Monte Cristo a lesson in keeping appointments. Or I'd go out and bring him in. We shall have the pleasure of listening to another banker give us excuses instead of money. Where do you come? Count of Monte Cristo, Your Excellency. Welcome to Lichtenberg, Your Excellency. Thank you. Terribly sorry to be so late, but that's a weakness of mine. I once kept the Shah of Persia waiting two weeks. <laughs> oh. But at last I'm face to face with the great Gurko Lannan. I would hardly allude to myself as great. Oh, naturally not. That's a privilege reserved for your admirers. <laughs> they say a cat can look at a king, so perhaps a humble banker can look at a hero. Do you mind my curiosity? Not at all, but uh, won't you sit down? <sighs> if only you knew how I simply adore men of action. Strong, self-made men with, with high ambition. Who grasp life firmly and, and bend it to their will. <laughs> my father was like that, you know. Yes, I do know. A remarkable man. Yes, I suppose he was. But I'm getting a little bored having him stuffed down my throat by everyone. Oh, don't misunderstand me. I loved him and all that, but I, I'll never forgive him. Really? Why not? Well, if only he'd endowed me with a little of his character, instead of all his money, I too might have been a man of action. 
but <laughs> I'm not, so <laughs> there you are. Yes, but men of action can do nothing without the support of influential bankers. Surely you must thrill to the knowledge that there is more power in your signature than there is in my sword. Thrill? I detest the banking. Why, at this moment, it's taken me away from Paris at the very height of the social season. If it wasn't for my intense interest in meeting you, I'd be very unhappy. However, here I am, so there you are. Oh, uh, let's get out of business. Uh, <clears throat> you, uh, you applied to uh, my banking house for a loan, I believe. Uh, yes, sir. Twenty-five million francs. Twenty-five million francs? Is that all? Oh, I, I thought it was more. Well, I... Uh, however, we can discuss that later. Of course. I could give you a yes or no now. But that wouldn't be good banking. I've been taught to, to frown at a client. Put him off. Keep him dangling. So I'm afraid you'll just have to dangle a while. <laughs> Filthy business, isn't it? No hurry, no hurry at all. I wanted you to be thoroughly convinced that your loan would be a secure one. And I assure you... Now, 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 now. Don't try and get a decision out of me. I've already made one, but you must dangle. I trust that uh, during your stay you will be my guest here at Paris. That's most considerate of you. I should be charmed. Colonel Simon, send for Lieutenant Tornard. Yes, Excellency. Oh, there were two things they told me to be sure and see in Lichtenberg, if I can remember them. Um, ah, yes, your lovely countryside and your uh, Grand Duchess um, Zona. I hear she's very beautiful. It will be my pleasure to present you to Her Royal Highness. Perhaps tonight. We dine at 8.30. Charming, charming. Lieutenant Donner, this is the Count of Monte Cristo, my personal guest. See that he's given one of the royal apartments and that everything is done for his comfort. Thank you, General. Till 8.30, then. A bit of a fool, Zimmerman, but rich. I think if we handle him carefully, we'll get what we want. Zona, will you stop wriggling? This is the fifth time I've gone through the motions of getting you dressed. You sure I look all right? If you mean, will he suspect that you haven't had a wink of sleep in four nights, the answer is no. I remember he said he was coming to Lichtenberg on business, but I never dreamed he'd come here. Will you please try to remember that you're a Grand Duchess? Darling, it's the first time in my life I haven't felt like one. He may be able to help us. A man like the Count of Monte Cristo must have powerful friends. Baron von Neuhoff had powerful friends, and he's having his dinner in the palace dungeon. Perhaps his last dinner. I'm sorry. Come in. Dinner is served at the pleasure of Her Royal Highness. Thank you, sir. I present the Count of Monte Cristo. I'm happy indeed to welcome you to Lichtenberg. Your Royal Highness. I can't tell you how honored I am to be here. Hey, the Countess von Braun, the Count of Monte Cristo. My dear Count. Enchanted. The Count of Monte Cristo is the last person I expected to receive here. I hope Your Royal Highness won't think I'm presumptuous. It's terribly funny, but uh, for a moment I had a feeling we'd met before. Perhaps it's because the Royal House reminds me of someone I once knew. Oh, the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. But of course she was not the Grand Duchess of Lichtenberg. Oh, no. In fact, her name was Fathendub. <laughs> uh, what? Yes, really it was, Fathendub. Well, uh, my dear Christo, you don't strike me as being the type of man who would let a beautiful woman escape him, even if her name was uh, whatever it was. Uh, <laughs> well, I did everything I could. I was even ready to, to, to joust for the fair lady's favor. And I'm not a very good jouster, but she rode off out of my life. Shall we have dinner? General Lannan. It's so refreshing in this day of unrest to find a country where one firm hand dictates the national policy. Why, do you know in France it's come to the point where, where even a chimney sweep considers himself as good as a king? Uh, in Lichtenberg it is my policy to keep chimney sweeps in the chimneys. Oh, chimney sweeps in the chimneys. <laughs> excellent, my dear General, excellent. <laughs> Very funny fellow, isn't he? <laughs> I understand you're in Lichtenberg on business, Your Excellency. Well, no, not exactly. You'll see. Oh, he's too modest. Since three o'clock this afternoon, Lichtenberg is indebted to His Excellency in the sum of 25 million francs. 
Oh, on the contrary, my dear General. I feel greatly indebted to you. It's such a privilege to meet a great man doing such great things for his country. One can't place a monetary value on achievement. Don't you agree, Your Royal Highness? Gentlemen, I'll leave you to your cigars and port. But I don't smoke. And my doctor assures me that port is the reason all Englishmen have the gout. <laughs> if you'll excuse me, I had a headache. I'm afraid the ladies didn't enjoy their dinner. Oh, really? I thought it very palatable. I have to report that 10 o'clock inspection of the guard has been made. Uh, 10 o'clock? Excuse me. Must be the provincial atmosphere, but I have that, that drowsy feeling. Just right after a good dinner and before a good night's sleep. Oh, I quite understand. Well, you must have had a very tiring day. Suppose we just say good night. Ah, oh, the perfect host. Who knows the exact moment at which to say good night? Attend His Excellency. Schultz and I are ready at 11. 11. Splendid. That gives me exactly 58 minutes and 30 seconds. This way, Your Excellency. If you don't mind, I think I'll go this way. And I don't need an attendant. Your Highness, what a pleasant surprise. Mm, but fresh air is, I believe, the best cure for a headache. Uh, may I? You change characters quite easily. I saw you first as a cavalier. Now I see you in the role of a fop, flattering the ego of a man that your first personality should have every reason to despise. Just what is your true character? Hmm? Oh, I'm a businessman. A banker, to be exact. I believe in making my clients feel superior to myself. <laughs> in pet, you made me believe you were a chivalrous gentleman. I even cherish the memory of what you did that night. I hope you believe it's my desire to add to that memory. By lending General Lannan all the money he needs to completely destroy my country. But loans are not based on sentiment, but on sound collateral. And what collateral does he offer you? A mortgage on the whole of Lichtenberg. What you have bought is a partnership in his crimes against my people. From what I've heard of your father, he'd hardly be proud to know that his son had financed a tyrant and a traitor. But perhaps I made this loan because I consider you the most important part of my security. How unfortunate. You should know that General Lannan does not include me in the collateral for the reason that General Lannan has proposed marriage to me. Also on a business basis. You know, you're even more beautiful when you're angry. Good night. at a time. Good night, beloved. Therefore, I, Gorko Lannan, do impose the sentence of death by hanging upon the said Baron von Uhoff, and do order that the execution of this death warrant shall be carried out at 12 o'clock midnight, May the 10th. Which is tonight, I believe. Do you have anything to say? Yes. You may deliver a last message to General Lannan. Tell him that if he hopes to bury loyalty to Zona of Lichtenberg in my grave, it will rise again to destroy him. Guards! <laughs> Don't you? Just Lieutenant Donner reporting for duty, sir. Well. Wow. For the rest of my life, I'm going to view all fireplaces with suspicion. But it's very useful. Well, my father and grandfather were officers of the household guard. They taught me a lot of useful things about this palace Kirko doesn't know. Let's hope that fireplace is one of them. Are we ready? As ready as a last hope can be. But it's better than no hope at all. I feel that I drag you into this. <laughs> I galloped in. We've one chance in a hundred of getting two Vanu off. To say nothing of getting them out. That makes it a sporting proposition. Should we go? This way. Where's Schultz? Making his rounds. He'll join us below. The stairs have been forgotten for 50 years. Let's hope they won't be remembered for another 50. In one minute, the sentry will inspect von Neuhoff's cell. I'll meet you at the bottom of the stairs. All right.
I'd better go in first. You'll be recognized on sight. But you'd be recognized too. No, I won't. I decided to create another character that General Lannon doesn't know. One I hope he never will. Well, this is the last night we'll have to do this. And good riddance. The trouble with this job, we're as much in jail as Von Newhoff. Yes, but we aren't going to hang in an hour. Nothing new. He's sleeping like a baby. Well, I wouldn't be sleeping like a baby. You would if you were an aristocrat like Von Newhall. Now, well, let's have a look at him. Yeah, he's sleeping all right. The minute we get Von Newhoff out, we make it to the North Tower. Every prisoner thought that there'd never be an escape. Come on, we're leaving. Traitorous. 
swine. It's more than fairy tales and goblins to explain this. Not even a man in a mask could disappear through these walls. Look at that. Footprints. Finger marks. Disappeared through the walls. You imbeciles! You stuffed dummies in uniform! The world knows that I considered Von Newhoff a special prisoner. Kept him in this dungeon where I could watch him to prevent his escape. And you have dared to humiliate me by permitting him to get away. The man you were guarding was to die at midnight. You two will die in his place. But Excellency, we're, we're innocent. Innocent or guilty you will die. If only because I must show the bodies of more than one traitor to explain such an escape. See if my orders are carried out. I'll pick up that grating. Let me go, Excellency. Your life may be in danger. Well, upon you, Hoffman, liberty more than my life is in danger. In here. When you're after sewer rats, Zimmerman, you have to go into sewers to find them. Hunt! Hunt! Go back along the branch of the sewer that leads to the palace. Keep a close watch. We may have been followed. This is indeed a happy day for us. It's difficult for me to speak. Because I never expected to see you again. And I shouldn't have but for Monte Cristo, who is a living proof that if justice is crushed in one land, men will spring to its defense in every land. For the spirit of justice creates a common brotherhood. Tonight you have dealt Gerkel Lennon a great blow. Not because you rescued a prisoner named von Neuhoff, but because you set free a man who was a threat to his ambition. But it's no victory. Gerkel Lennon is not defeated so easily. He's lost one prisoner, but he holds another far more important, Zona of Lichtenberg. Until she is free, we have done nothing. But it will take an army to free her. Yes, I know it will. Our one hope is still the French. Louis Napoleon is my friend. I leave tonight for Paris. We'll see that you get safely out of the city. Yeah, 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 yeah. He came out of the water here. The old catacombs. Here are our footprints. They lead to this door. Break it down. sense of humor. So many people who appear to be free are really prisoners. You appear to be quite free. Oh, but I'm not. I've been a prisoner from the moment I found you in your wrecked carriage. You're a prisoner too. It's such a pity you have to be a Grand Duchess, when there are so many roads to be traveled, 
Mountains to be crossed, happiness, laughter, all the things you could have if you weren't a Grand Duchess. Who would give them to me? I would. And I could, too, if you were really Zona Fappendorp, a girl on her way to Paris. Love could come riding up to her carriage, but it's almost impossible for love to pass the sentries at the doors of a palace. <laughs> the man I'd welcome wouldn't find it impossible to pass the sentries, nor would it be necessary for him to enter the palace. I'd go out to meet him. A man like the torch. What, a ruffian, a, a masquerader? A ruffian and a masquerader who's unselfish enough to risk his life for others. Such a man would dare take love in his hands, be its master. Oh, you don't think I have daring, that I could be master? Daring in sport, perhaps. Master of money. I was speaking of love. That's to remind you I'm not Zona Fathendorf. Oh, your royal highness. Good afternoon. nasty sort, this, uh, this torch fellow. If I could only lay my hands on him. Well, why don't you just reach out and, and grab him? <laughs> you could, you know. My, I don't envy you. Too many problems. Always worried about von Neuhoff, Louis Napoleon, and now this torch, who seems to me to be just like some character out of a comic opera. <laughs> my dear Christo, at this moment, your comic opera character is a greater menace than the French. I appreciate how really dangerous he is. I've used the same weapons he's using against me. Why, this torch is more useful to von Neuhoff than a whole army corps. Overnight, he could become a hero, a popular leader, whom the people would follow blindly. Mystery, excitement, daring, those are the things that the people admire. Really? Oh, well, then you have to catch the fellow. You've made this torch sound very formidable. Formidable? <laughs> well, he's too clever to be run down by a squad of pig-headed soldiers. But I have my own weapons. This torch has friends fellow conspirators, any one of whom would sell his soul for 25,000 kroner. May I? A little closer, please. Thank you. Splendid. I'll double the reward. And furthermore, I'm willing to wager you that the fellow's nothing but a, but a silly crackpot, <laughs> with no more brains than I have. <laughs> the French ambassador. Well, Newhouse certainly hasn't been letting any grass grow under his feet. I've been expecting him. Let him in. Please excuse me. I find affairs of state simply horrid, and even more repugnant than, uh, than banking. His Excellency, the Marquis de Chauton. Good afternoon, Your Excellency. Sit down. I can carry out the instructions of my government standing. General Lennon? I'm instructed to inform you that my government recognizes Baron von Neuhoff as the legal representative of the government of Lichtenberg. Oh, really? Either you surrender Her Royal Highness, the Grand Duchess Zona, into the custody of the French government, or she will be liberated by force. My dear Ambassador, I'm not as naive as that. To you, von Neuhoff may still be the head of the legal government of Lichtenberg, but I have Her Royal Highness, who is the government itself, and possession is nine points of the law. Very well. I will report your answer to my government. Uh, may I ask Your Excellency a question? Yes. What would be the attitude of your government if Her Royal Highness announced her marriage with one General Lenin? Impossible. Not at all. If she thought that there was any danger to her people of a Russian invasion, she would do almost anything to save them from such a fate. A Russian invasion? Surely Your Excellency realizes that Russia is just as interested as France in using Lichtenberg as a buffer against Bismarck. 
I can understand the readiness of your government to support von Neuhoff against me, uh, but is it as eager to support him against me and Russia? Good afternoon, Your Excellency. Zola! Zola! The French ambassador just left in Krakow is furious. That's because of Baron von Neuhoff. I knew something like that would happen as soon as he escaped. Oh, Matilda, if we could only do something to help. No, Zola, wait! Oh, there's a note attached. To help Baron von Neuhoff and your people, you must escape. A way has been planned. Be at the Poston Gate, peasant dress, at ten tonight, and trust the torch. The torch? Maybe it's a trap of forgery. No, it isn't. I know it isn't. Come in. You wish to see me? Isn't it natural for a man to wish to see the woman who fills his thoughts? If you'll excuse me. You may leave without an apology, my dear Countess. Well, I've never Jack. Your Royal Highness, I've never seen you so beautiful. You look almost happy. My opportunities for happiness have been rather limited, General Lannan. I didn't expect another visit from you. <laughs> Did you think me the kind of man who was easily discouraged? Discouragement only makes me fight harder. To the kind of man you are, take into consideration my feelings. Zona, believe me, I desire your happiness above anything else in the world. So you prove it by keeping me a prisoner, away from my friends, my people. Your kind of man, General Lannan, wouldn't hesitate to sacrifice even the woman he loved to his ambitions. Would it be such a great sacrifice to share your throne, your life with a man who loves you? Could you marry a woman who despises you? If she knew how much I loved her, she wouldn't despise me. My destiny has led me to this palace. And to you. I've already told you, General Lannan. I wouldn't marry you under any consideration. My object in coming here was to ask you to change that decision. That has the sound of a threat. But if I don't... At the moment, Your Royal Highness, it is only a suggestion. Of what? that I should be most unhappy to adopt another method of obtaining your consent. I have no wish to press you too closely. I shall return tomorrow at this hour for your answer. And in the meantime, I hope that it will add to your happiness to know this will be the longest night of my life. Mathilde! Mathilde! Yes? What happened? What did he want? Marriage. Only this time it was a demand. Oh, Matilda, what'll I do? You can get out of here. Yes, yes, but how? We'll need help. Start. That's it. Start. We can trust him. You're right. Get him. Get him. Start. I know how greatly Baron von Neuhoff trusted you. Yes, Highness. He never doubted your loyalty. Oh, no, Highness. I want you to help me. You must help me. Anything, Highness. I'm trusting you with the whole of Lichtenberg. The torch. Somehow, you must get a peasant costume for Countess von Braun and myself. I know what a risk you take, but I promise you the reward will also be great. Will you do this for me? Yes, Highness, gladly. Go then, hurry. I flatter myself I've been of some small service to your excellency. You've done well, Stad. I also flatter myself I'm fitted for much larger opportunities. A man's advancement rests upon his ability. Exactly. I'm about to prove my ability by accomplishing something even your excellency has found impossible. The capture of the torch. What do you mean? Do you know who he is? No. But I know where he'll be at ten o'clock tonight. Well, come on, out with it. Did I mention, Excellency, that I'm an ambitious man? Well, I'm sure Your Excellency will agree that a man who makes possible the torture's capture has demonstrated his right to larger opportunities. 
to say nothing of the financial reward. You're right, Stad. What do you want? I feel I could serve Your Excellency to better advantage as, uh, shall we say, chief of the secret police. I've underestimated you, Stad. I admire a man who knows what he wants and how to get it. I think the man that runs down the torch should be chief of the secret police. Thank you. And now? The torch has a rendezvous with Her Royal Highness at ten tonight. He has planned her escape. If you set a trap at the postern gate near the servants' quarters, you catch not only the torch, but Her Royal Highness. How do you know? Your Excellency forgets. I also have Her Royal Highness's complete confidence. If I can be of any further service. Cover every inch of the palace grounds with troops and keep them concealed until the torch walks into the trap. Yes, Excellency. I never realized how clever Stutt really was. But this is only your signature. Over it, write an order of the death of one Conrad Stutt. But I thought... If he will betray Her Royal Highness, he will also betray me. But do not carry out the order until after we've caught the torch. Stand where you are. Stand clear. Throw on your sword. I'll be glad to give it to you. Stay out, Simulman. This is my pleasure. Sword, you must be a gentleman. My father was the best swordsman in France. My father was the best swordsman in France. Don't worry, I'll be back. Monte Cristo. After him. to be here, and now he's got away. Start! Yes, Your Royal Highness. Start. Zimmerman. Conduct Her Royal Highness to her apartment and keep her under constant guard. She's not to go anywhere or see anyone without my permission. If you please. Excellent. 
Excellency. Good evening. Are you badly hurt? Oh, no, it's just a scratch. I was worried about you, so I followed you here. And came in without knocking? Yes, I'm a spy. Now I understand. Well, what do you want, Stat? You know, it's very difficult for a man who's always wanted everything to suddenly discover he can have everything he ever wanted. Just, uh, what do you consider your life worth? For instance, it's worth 25,000 kronen to Gurkha Lenin, dead or alive. It's a miserly offer, don't you think? I'm worth much more to myself. <laughs> it is strange how one's sense of values changes. Before I discovered you were the torch, I thought 25,000 kronen was a fortune. But now, <laughs> I realize you could toss that amount to a beggar. And, uh, I do not have to beg. You're a very clever man, Stad. Would you, uh, would you mind telling me how you found out about this? I've always enjoyed the complete confidence of a royal highness. Oh, I see. And of course you betrayed her to General Lannan. Suppose we say, I took advantage of my opportunities, hmm? Oh, I'm a trifle nervous. Yes, I can understand. I also take advantage of my opportunities. I just can't believe it. Monte Cristo, the torch, and I thought him nothing but a young idiot with more money than brains. I called him worse than that. And all the time his life was in danger. Oh, Mathilde, what must he think of me? He must think the world of me. Good night, darling. body was found where we fought the torch last night, with 30 silver crowns in his hands, and this tied around his neck. The torch again. Well, at least we're saved the trouble of getting rid of the ambitious Mr. Stutt. Do you mind? Not at all. Thank you. A remarkable fellow, this torch. Not only a grim sense of humor, but the very devil in his sword blade. My dear General Lannan, I came to Lichtenberg as a banker, not to attend a perpetual masked ball. This torch of yours will upset my entire social season. I wish you'd catch the fellow so that I could get back to Paris. After all, he is your affair. We'll catch him. And soon. Whether we catch him or not matters little now. Oh? I thought he was such a problem. Yes, he was a problem. But in a few moments, von Neuhoff, France, and the Torch will have lost their ability to interfere in my affairs. The Russian ambassador, Excellency. Oh, show Prince Papa Finn and see if we're not disturbed. Your Excellency? My dear Paul, I've been expecting you. The Count of Monte Cristo, Prince Paolo. How do you do? So you are the young man with all the money. <laughs> Not all. <laughs> I wanted Monte Cristo here so that he could witness the signature of our historic agreement. After all, he has a great interest in uh, Lichtenberg affairs. Twenty-five million francs worth, to be exact. Oh. I think it covers the points of our agreement, Your Excellency. Yes. Yes. All ready for signature. <laughs> My dear Paul. Thank you. This agreement pledges Russia to put me on the throne of Lichtenberg. And to keep me there by force, if necessary. Now you can understand why the future activities of the torch are reduced to mere mock heroics. King Gurkha the First. <laughs> it's incredible, really. I'll feel better when this agreement is deposited in the embassy safe. Uh, this is more than an agreement. It is practically an announcement of my betrothal to Zona of Lichtenberg. You make a charming couple. Thank you, Your Excellency. My dear Count. And now, if you will excuse me, my dear Cristo, I have a very important appointment at this hour. I trust you will not have to return to Paris before my wedding. Ah, yes, your wedding. I wouldn't miss it for the world. <laughs> General Lannan is still outside. He's been waiting ten minutes. Have you forgotten, my dear? He's here for his answer. I'll go. He 
you know why I'm here? My answer's the same. What you ask is impossible. I think I told you that I would regret having to adopt another method of gaining your consent. has the duplicate in his possession. You mean you've betrayed the people of Lichtenberg? Turned the country into a Russian province? Well, even you can't do that. I dreamed that one day I would be king and that you would sit by my side. You forget, Sona, that I'm a man who dares to carry out his dreams. If the people knew you'd signed such an agreement, they'd storm the palace and drag you through the streets. The power of diplomacy lies in the fact that the people never discover the truth until it is too late. deeply you love your people. How concerned you must be for their welfare. Zona, marry me. Share my star. We can rise to any heights with it and endow our children with its greatness. You're right about the concern I have for my people. You've made it impossible for me to save them. But I was born their queen. I must remain their queen. mean you will. I cannot abandon my country when it needs whatever protection I can give it. There's nothing left for me to do but marry you. Robber, my friend, talk us to me. I'm not interested in your purse, Prince Pavlov. I'm pursuing a hobby. The mask and cloak. A rather dangerous hobby, I should say. I'm collecting the autographs of certain people. Like yourself and General Lannan, shall we say? Do you think I carry pen and paper in my pocket? Not the autographs I want are on the document you carry. So close to your heart. Forgive me. You fool, you're right for this. when you were fighting for me at the Poston Gate. How? Oh. Of course. I used the same trick against Gurko I used at Patch. I should have known from the first. I didn't want you to know. Edmund, I remember all those dreadful things I said to you at the same time you were risking everything for me. But even when I said them, I hated myself for it. Can you ever forgive me? I remember one thing you said. That a man like the torch wouldn't have to pass the sentries at the gates of the palace. You go out and meet him. Is that still true? It's always been true. From that very first day of Petch. Then, then why did you write you couldn't see me again? Because... Not even the torch can help me now. I couldn't bear to look at you again after you knew I must marry General Lannan. But you don't have to marry him. That's what I came here to tell you. I've seen that. That's why I must marry him. No, you saw Gurko's copy. This one I stole from Pavlov. Tomorrow the world will know that Gurko's a traitor. 
It won't let you sacrifice yourself to such a man. I'm worn out climbing in and out of windows and up and down chimneys. It'll be such a relief to go through an ordinary door again. It would have been much simpler if you had been Zona Fafendorf, a young girl on her way to Paris. Edmund, you remember on the balcony I, I slapped you. You know, we're not entirely safe yet. I must get back to my rooms before Gurko misses me. Perhaps I shouldn't have come here at all, but I had to let you know. I warn you, General Lennon, my government will demand satisfaction for the manhandling of its ambassador. Any foul agreement is made public prematurely. I will denounce it as a forgery. Safety of that document means more to me than it does to you, Pavlov. In the hands of my enemies, it will destroy me. Torch. The man's a genius. Wherever he strikes, it's always in a vital spot. We've been fools, Zimmerman. We've been looking for this torch in the wrong place. He's right here in this palace. And I can prove it to you by simple reasoning. Four men in the whole world knew of the existence of our agreement. Now, three of them are here in this room. The other... Monte Cristo? That guilted fool. No. That very clever young man. In whose interest has this torch been working? Zona. Therefore, Zona must know who he is. In Russia, he would have been arrested on less suspicion. You can't arrest a man as powerful as Monte Cristo on suspicion. It requires proof. And I think I know how I can get it. Would you gentlemen be interested in joining me in a psychological experiment? Present my compliments to Her Royal Highness and ask her to be kind enough to come down here for a moment. Ask Her Royal Highness to come here? I think she'd be glad to come. If you mentioned that it concerns the torch. Her Royal Highness. I don't understand why you asked me to come here. I wanted to prepare your Royal Highness for a shock. I know how great your interest must be in a man who has risked his life in your service. My service? A short time ago, Prince Pavlov was robbed of his copy of our agreement by the torch. But not without a struggle, during which the torch lost the one clue which makes his capture inevitable. My men are closing in on him at this moment. Why do you tell me this? Oh, uh, to uh, soften your natural grief at the news of his capture and sentence, his activities force me to make an example of him. You will hang. There is nothing else I can do. Is that all you wanted to tell me, General Lennon? Why, yes. Since when has the hanging of one man been of such great concern? In Russia, we are more forceful. She's not interested in the torch. Your experiment was not very successful. You must be patient, my dear Pavlov. This is only the beginning of my experiment. How did you find out? In the struggle with Pavlov. You left a clue. But there was no struggle with Pavlov. But you... Well, then why did Lennon tell me? He's using me to trap you. He'll follow me. Oh, please go while there's still time. He'll be too late. By morning, the agreement he made with Pavlov will be in the hands of the people. He'll be glad to save himself. But he doesn't need until morning to destroy you. Please go, for my sake.
I'm going, but I'll be back. He told them to arrest the Count of Monte Cristo, but he didn't say anything about the torch. In the past, the Count of Monte Cristo has protected the torch. Now it's the torch's turn to protect Monte Cristo. If only you had been Zola Pfaffenberg. Edmund, I'm afraid. I fear we may never see each other again. Please, just for one instant, let me be Zola Pfaffenberg. Let's use our imaginations. Do you love me? More than anything in the whole world. Keep saying that till I get back. I've made arrangements for you to stay. Will you please put down that sword? I regret that a cell will not be as comfortable as your present quarters, but it is only a temporary arrangement. I'm sorry to disappoint you. I'm forced to accept your kind hospitality after all. I'll trouble you for the agreement that you stole from Prince Pavlov. Because of your great interest in this document, I want you to see it returned to its rightful owner. As I mentioned once before, I'll feel much easier when this is in the embassy safe. At times, blind loyalty is dangerous. Your friend, Lieutenant Dorner, for instance, tried to warn you that we were coming for you. This is the first time I permitted my feelings to come before my duty. But I couldn't see them take you. He'll keep you company where you're going. Take him away. Fall in. Fall in. March. I understand now how my father must have felt. Twenty years in a cell. I'd rather be dead than cooped up in a place like this. Don't worry, you'll get your wish. <laughs> Gurkhalan is very accommodating. The torch, eh? Here you are, Your Excellency. A billy do for you. <laughs> Shall I wait for an answer? It's an invitation to the wedding. If you stand on your tiptoes, you might be able to see the palace from the scaffold. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why I never thought Gurko Lanny had a sense of humor. It's beautiful, just as you're the most beautiful bride that Lichtenberg will ever see. Mathilde, don't please. I'm sorry. I'm just no fool. There must be some way. How can I walk to an altar at the same moment he's walking to the scaffold? Perhaps if I beg General Lannon, he might save him at the last minute. Beg? You can't do that. I can do anything for him just as he was willing to do anything for me. The crowd is impatient for Her Royal Highness and Your Excellency to make an appearance. We're in time, in time. Come in. Her Royal Highness. Here we go, little man. Zona, you're lovely. 
But don't you know that it's bad luck for the groom to see the bride in her bridal gown before they meet at the altar? That is, it would be bad luck if I believed in luck. They're waiting for us. General Lennon, I know you're a man without mercy, but I must ask you for mercy. At this moment, you've realized all your dreams. Your star is shining in the high heavens. You have what you want. Yes, I have everything I want. I have something for you. Your wedding present. I do hope that it'll make you happy. You have the power to give me something that will make me very happy. The life of Monte Cristo. His liberty. Please, send him back to France. He can't hurt you now. But he can hurt me. Not as the torch, but as a man who has held you in his arms and kissed you. If he were alive, I would remember that every time I looked at you. Shall we go? Good people of Lichtenberg, Her Royal Highness and I thank you for this demonstration of your loyalty, affection, and happiness at our marriage. Her Royal Highness finds it difficult to speak to you because of the depth of her emotion. But I'm sure that she will join me in saying that this is the happiest day of her life. This is the happiest day of my life. That'll take care of you. I guess they're ready. It would have been worth coming to Lichtenberg just to know you, if for no other reason. I'm glad I'm going to be with you until you leave. Who goes there? Transfer of prisoners from Brinkman. It's all planned. You're going back to France. No, you're wrong. If you get me out of here, I'm going to a wedding that's about to take place. Edmund, let well enough alone. We're grateful for your life. You've done all that any man can do. From now on, the fight is ours. Not while there's a copy of that Russian agreement in Pavlov's safe. It's too late for that now. The moment Gurko marries Zola, he becomes co-ruler of Lichtenberg with the powers of a king. Even if we had the evidence, there's no time to use it. And the palace is surrounded by troops. Wait a minute. I think we could use it without fighting the troops. A good surprise is deadlier than an army. Hans, can you make a hundred copies like this quickly? Yes. How quickly? Two hours, maybe one hour. Too long, half an hour. I'll try. Good, start now. Edmunds is madness. Of course it is. We're all madmen. That's why we have the strength of a thousand ordinary men. Well said. Secretary to His Highness Prince Pavel. 
the ambassador of his imperial majesty. And you're just the man we're looking for. Open that tape. I refuse. Open it. Very well. But I warn you, only under protest. You'll write your protest after we leave. Max, the whole country will thank you for letting us ruin your stock like this. If those wedding bells make Gurko king of Lichtenberg, nobody's stock will be worth much. Here they are! Monte Cristo! That's mine. You all look marvelous. Thanks. Where's Hans? He's not here yet. What? No. Hans, I'm waiting for you. I did it. But the press will never be the same. I knew you'd do it. Pass these out. Now listen, everyone. Remember to look and act as though you really had been invited. Be on your dignity as befits the occasion. Once you're inside the palace, mingle with the guests. But take up positions where you can watch every door and every window and every soldier in the ballroom. Then wait for me. We might get into the palace. But how will the Baron, you and Donner get in? You're marked men. They'll shoot you on sight. I know. We'll have to capture the guards outside the palace. What? The three of you? But all agreed the wedding must be stopped, aren't we? Yes! yes. yes. Well, then, let's stop it. Here comes. Give me a gun. Give me a gun. Give me a gun. Give me a gun. I'm extremely sorry, my dear Baron. I don't wish to offend the Count Bombrowski. But my instructions are to admit no one without an invitation. In that case, we shall both leave. Oh, but my dear Baron, you were invited. You must attend. I'm sorry. Uh, invitations, gentlemen. I've ordered my carriage to return at 11. Do you think the ceremony will be over by then? Oh, yes, sir, I'm sure. Uh, thank you, sir. Invitations, gentlemen. Duchess of Lichtenberg. constrained will and a firm intention to take unto thyself to husband this man Gurko whom thou seest here before thee I have your eminence thou hast not promised thyself to any other man I have not promised myself your eminence oh, we let that torch get away and there's 50,000 kroner on his head. Never mind his head, but your neck. The gallows we built for him, Gurkha will use for us. I am free. <coughs> Help me. Up yourself. I'm on the way to the palace. There might still be time. The servant of God, Gurkha, is crowned onto the handmaiden of God, Zona. If Christo isn't here in another minute, Lichtenberg will have a new king. The handmaiden of God, Zona, is crowned onto the servant of God, Gurko. Signal or no signal, I'm not going to see my queen marry that. Quite, you fool, you own everything. Where's the captain of the guard? Monte Cristo, the torch has escaped, and there's 50,000 kronen on his head. Why tell me? Won't be my luck to catch him. He'll never come here. Why not? I have an invitation to the wedding from General Lannan himself. Haven't I, Jailer? There he is! The torch!
Someone's on their horse. No one will hear them from in there. We'll get in the old way, through the fireplace, and meet Christo on the balcony. If there be any among you who know why these two servants of God should not be wed, let him speak now, or forever after, hold his peace. I suggest that General Lannan is best fitted to answer that question. The torch! The torch. Yes, the torch. Not a man in a mask and a cloak, but the symbol of our liberty. The son of a man who devoted his life to the defeat of persecution and injustice. The Count of Monte Cristo. <laughs> There's no need to present me to General Lannan. We're old friends. Arrest those men. Be where you are, everyone. It's my extreme pleasure to inform you that your guards are prisoners, and you're taking orders from me. And the palace is completely surrounded. Jerko Lannan, I arrest you in the name of the people of Lichtenberg for the crime of high treason against the state. The penalty for which is death. Lock every door to this room. If anyone in this room moves, there'll be no survivor to the throne of Lichtenberg. Proceed with the ceremony. In another moment, Baron von Neuhoff, you can present your charges to your king. Well, go on. Surely you haven't forgotten the words. Repeat after me. I, Gurko, I, Gurko, pledge my life and my love to Zona. Pledge my life and my love to Zona. To hold and to cherish her until death us do part. To hold and to cherish her until death us do part. Repeat after me. I, Zona, I, Zona. Pledge my life and my love to Gurko. Pledge my life and my love to Gurko. To hold and to cherish him until death us do part. To hold and to cherish him. Until death us do part. Your right hand. Your right hand, Zona. With this ring, I do thee wed. With this ring, I do thee wed. No! Don't shoot! This is my privilege. What, running from the throne, General Lannan? I feel your fall will be as spectacular as your rise. I said I'd be back. Long live Zona of Lichtenberg. Long live the Royal Highland. This is really the happiest day of my life. Long live the Count of Monte Cristo. Long live the Count of Monte Cristo. <laughs>